cheerful day, that autumn of 1839, when the letter arrived, if I had but known what stark and icy terror that simple parchment would bring into my life, I would have immediately torn it to shreds. Just seeing the return address drew out memories of my boyhood friend Roderick and the old mansion where he lived. House of Usher, Raven's Head Lake. I hadn't seen Roderick Usher in years. In fact, I just planned on writing him myself to tell of the recent marriage to my beautiful wife, Jennifer. Roderick had always been a strange, quiet, and introverted boy, and I was perhaps the only friend he had in school. But as I opened the letter and read, it was clear it was not a time for happy news. My dear friend Jonathan, although it has been quite a few years since last we met, I hope you remember me with the fondness I have always held for you. There are elements threatening my peace and welfare that worsen with each dawn. You are my final hope in this morbid despair. Roderick claims the old mansion is in dire need of repair, that it deteriorates more each day. Well, my husband's reputation as an engineer is well known, even at Raven's Head Lake. I'm more worried about Roderick and his sister Madeline. In the letter, he spoke of an acute illness plaguing them. They have no one to turn to. But everyone has to have at least one relative somewhere. An old aunt, a distant cousin. Uh, not the ushers. Their families followed a, a line of descent from father to children. And now Roderick and Madeline are the last of them. One of them doesn't marry and have children before they die. It'll be the last of the ushers. Looks like we'll have to walk for help. We just passed a sign back there. Elbow Benders will be going home to hearth and wives soon. Now the old ladies will lock them out. <laughs> then maybe I could pay someone to take my wife and me to our destination. Maybe. All right, you howling pack of banshees. Simmer down. Here's a stranger and he needs transportation. Where to, mister? Raven's Head Lake. Nothing there but dark and putrid water. Even the fish have long since died, along with the trees and brush. There's no living thing prowls the coldness of that place. Now, what business have you got in that ungodly wilderness? I'm going to visit a friend there. You must be a mite confused, mister. Only thing at Raven's Head Lake is the House of Usher. And that evil pile of stones is as dead as the land it squats on. It so happens I'm going to visit Mr. Usher. Ain't any fool here. We'll haul you there. 
I'll pay two dollars to anyone who will take us to Raven's Head Lake. Two dollars? Ah! I'd my pains that cheap. I'd sooner wrestle the devil for two dollars. <laughs> Make it five. In advance. Agreed. <laughs> My wagon's just outside. Yes, I've always said, Finney, you've got more belly nerve than sense. <laughs> Strange. The weather around here has a way of changing, fast. No, not that. It's so quiet. All of a sudden, there are no sounds of frogs or crickets or anything. It is the unearthly nature of the place, man. Like the hand of a dead man reaching out to warn you away. Finny, I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't upset my wife. There's more ahead than old Finny upset her. The truth is that the people around here have always been suspicious of the ushers because they never go into town. It doesn't take much to prod someone who is superstitious. Superstitious, huh? I've heard stories of those who ventured too close to the house of usher that were never seen again. Nonsense. Four years ago, a carpenter from the village went up to do repairs. They found him two months later. Dark raven man. Whoa! Why are we stopping here? This be where you get out. But I paid you five dollars to take us to the House of Usher. The Raven's Head Lake was the deal. That's where you be. The Usher Mansion be less than a quarter mile beyond the bed. Now, you see here. Oh, come on. The walk might warm me up. It's really turned icy. should force you to take us to that house. Jonathan, don't. Mr. Finney is right. I remember you asked only to be taken to Raven's Head Lake and not the Usher Mansion. Thank you very much, Mr. Finney. You be a right fine lady, ma'am. A lot nicer than some of the fancyans I had the misfortune of doing service for. Look, mister, I'll fix your carriage wheel and leave your rig at the lamb and flag for you. If she were my woman, you can bet your eyeballs I wouldn't be dragging her to some forsaken place like this. Ah! Well, at least there's a full moon out tonight. We should have no problem seeing our way. I don't think I've ever heard such total silence in my life. Even the wind makes no sound. It's because you're accustomed to the noise of the city. We're in the country now. Is that what you call this desolate place? Must be getting closer to the house. Oh, come on. Should be just a few more yards around the bend. of Usher.
dead. Nothing. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. It couldn't be. What is it? Roderick had a dog just like this. A Rottweiler. But that was 25 years ago. Dogs can't live that long. I know. I had only been to the House of Usher once as a boy, and I'd forgotten just how sinister and uninviting the old mansion was. I see now the incident with the dog was only the beginning of the nightmare to come. to be huge knocking rings right there. Mr. Cresswell? Yes. My name is Thaddeus. If you'll follow me, please. No! Please, stay on the wall runners. Any obtrusive sound deeply affects the tranquility of this house. Disrepair. There's no air in here. This was the suite of Mr. Usher's mother. It hasn't been opened since she died, 22 years ago. That is, let me help. I apologize for the unpleasant condition of the chamber. But we weren't expecting a lady to accompany you. I hope it's been no inconvenience. 
dinner will be served shortly. Oh, it must have been lovely here once. Oh, what I mean is when everything was bright and fresh. This tiny bed won't accommodate two people very comfortably. This is Mrs. Cresswell's room, sir. Your quarters are just down the hall. We've been married only a few weeks. We don't fancy being separated so soon. I am sorry, sir. But in this house, there has never been accommodations for two people in the same room. Why is that? The whole house seemed to shift on its foundation. It's been like this for some time now. I'll show you to your quarters. Will you be all right? Of course, dear. I must oil these hinges. Russia would be here to greet us when we arrived. The master and Lady Madeline usually don't leave their chambers until darkness. Even the light of dusk troubles their sensitive eyes. This illness of theirs, is it contagious? Only to ushers. Oh, Thaddeus, I should mention, uh, when we came up, there was a dog. Hmm. I wondered where Manfred had gone to. Manfred? Surely that's not the same dog I saw here 25 years ago. The same bloodline. He came after us on the road. Uh, I'm sorry to say he died there. I'll take care of him. Sorry for the trouble, sir. Tell me about this strange acuteness of senses that seems to trouble Mr. Usher and his sister. I've never heard of such an illness. a while ago. I was over here tidying up my face and hair when I suddenly got the distinct feeling that someone was watching me. Ah, oh, it's this house. Dark shadows, subdued light, the creak of old wood plays tricks on you. It's on its last legs, I'm afraid. That crack in the front wall looks bad. Do you think you can fix it? I won't know until I inspect the foundation. Oh, excuse me. Thaddeus, isn't it considered good manners to knock before entering? I'm sorry, sir, but we try not to make any unnecessary noise. 
The master will see you now. Alone. You are just what this tomb of an old house needs to cheer it up. The master's chamber is at the far end of the hall. Don't knock. Just go right in. He's expecting. gratitude for coming, my good friend. I have been ill. After so many years, I must seem quite startling to you, yes. Not at all. I had Thaddeus set out some port. He tells me your young wife is with you. I trust you've been made quite comfortable. To be perfectly frank, we would appreciate a room together. Well, you see, we've been married just a few weeks. I'm afraid that can't be arranged. You see, uh, there are no double beds in the house. Perhaps we could put another bed in Jennifer's room. You know how wives are. She dislikes being alone. Well, that too would be awkward, my friend. You see, the beds are bolted to the floor, as is all the furniture. Why? The house often jolts violently, slipping on its foundation. So I've secured all the furniture to the floor. Your letter said that both you and Madeline were ill. What troubles you? It has no name. It is a hereditary disease which attacks the five senses. Has your physician prescribed a medication? There is none. It has no cure. It is the reason no usher has ever lived beyond his 37th year. You are my last hope, Jonathan. My last desperate attempt to save myself from certain doom. You must save this house. What has this house to do with your illness? Can you save it? The situation doesn't look encouraging, but I won't know for certain until I've made a complete inspection of the foundation. You must find out where you must. In any event, I think the house is dangerous. You and Madeline should leave and stay in the village. Then, if it's possible to make repairs... No, no, we can't leave the house. Why not? For many reasons. For one, Madeline's condition worsens every day. I'm afraid to move her. But these rooms are so dark and dreary. Surely that adds to your morbid disposition. Put it out and play me! <laughs> Roderick, I'm sorry. I can't fault you, Jonathan. How could you ever imagine the horrors of hell we live in? The sensitivity is so excruciating that I have to have garments made of the most delicate texture. Every odor assaults my nostrils. I can't endure even the fragrance of flowers. And only the blandest of food is palatable. But it is light and sound that creates the most torment. Neither Madeline nor I can tolerate anything above a whisper. Anything louder than that pierces our ears like a thousand needles. Even the flutter of bats' wings outside of our window disturbs what little sleep we can steal. There's only one sound which seems to soothe the torture of my ears. The sweet sound of the strings of my cello. 
about it. I'm no. sorry. No, Jonathan, I don't want your pity, only your help. Go now. I look forward to meeting your wife at dinner. about this house, sir, that you do not know. Perhaps it's best you don't know. If you take my advice, you'll finish what you have to do here and leave and ask as few questions as possible. Well, it's delicious. My compliments, Thaddeus. Thank you, madam. My apologies for being unable to serve meat or fowl, but it seems our hunting preserve has long been barren of beast or bird. Jonathan, you're a very fortunate man to have such a lovely and gracious wife. But I think this dreary house is hardly appropriate for a holiday for a new bride. Nonsense. You've been a most cordial host. I'm just sorry your sister Madeline couldn't dine with us tonight. My sister is best left confined to her chamber. Her condition makes her poor company for strangers. Look out! Roderick. You and Madeline must leave this house before it caves in on you. Jonathan, you've got to save it. You're an engineer. You must find a way. burying the dog. I find it difficult to believe that Roderick is two years older than you are. He seems at least a dozen years your senior. He's obviously quite ill. That and his obsessed concern for saving this old house. There's something, I don't know, unnerving about this place. Try and get some rest. Maybe after I inspect the house in the morning, we can leave in the afternoon. I don't think I'll sleep a wink in this mausoleum. Try and read. If there's nothing there that suits you, there's a whole library in the study. I can sleep on the divan and you can take the bed. That wouldn't be very comfortable, I'm afraid. Like and bolt the door.
Someone there? Sorry if I startled you, Mrs. Cresswell. I was just making my nightly rounds before returning. May I help you? I was looking for the library. The study is this way. I'm sorry you had trouble sleeping. Let me get a book for you. No, thank you, Thaddeus. I prefer to choose one myself. As you wish. Good night, Thaddeus. Good night. She's just fainted, sir. I heard her scream. What happened? There are so many things that can frighten a young woman in a house like this. An unexplained shadow, a sudden noise. Help me get her back to her room. I'll get the smelling salts.
What woman? My sister Madeline, I'm afraid. You said your sister was confined to her room. Sometimes she cannot sleep and roams the house, restless and in agonizing pain. She looked as if she was about to strangle me. Oh, no, I'm sure you were just startled by Madeline. Often a sudden fright seems much worse than it actually is. She looks so ghastly white standing there. With her arms outstretched towards me. John said it was horrible. Have her drink some of the sleeping potion. It'll help you sleep. Everything will be fine. It's okay. I'll stay with you tonight. Morning, sir. Did you sleep well? I must admit I've had more restful nights. It's so dark out there, you'd think it was dusk. I'm afraid that we can offer you only coffee with some toast and jelly for breakfast. That'll be fine. How is Mrs. Cresswell this morning? She's still asleep. Gruel again? Is that all that Roderick and Madeline eat? Yes, it's been the only food they can tolerate for nearly five years now. I've never heard of this strange illness that affects them. Yeah. I remember how the master's father suffered the same symptoms in the last nine years of his life. The sharpening of all his senses. The acuteness increasing to almost unendurable limits. Even as a boy, I was instructed never to speak above a whisper. What of Roderick's mother? We heard she passed away when she was 46. You heard? You mean she didn't die here? No, sir. Mrs. Usher was committed to a mental institution. Six months after Mr. Usher's death. How long have you been in service here? My family has served the Ushers for over six generations. Well, then you're as much a part of the House of Usher as Roderick and Madeline. That I am, sir. The whole house is unstable. Yes, it's in its death throes, I'm afraid. Huh? Shall I take Mrs. Cresswell's breakfast up to her now, sir? I'll take it to her. Thank you, sir. When I come back, I would like to start my inspection of the foundation. As you wish, sir. I didn't mean to startle you. I brought breakfast. 
thank you. I'm not hungry. You look peaked. How do you feel? Very weak. Cold climbiness in this house. Rotten air. Help me dress and then let's leave. Risk you catching pneumonia out on the open road? Besides, you know that I promised Roderick I'd see if anything could be done to save the house. I guess you're right. I must admit, I have an ounce of energy to stir from this bed. You rest. We should be able to leave by tomorrow. so dark. Ah, uh, tis no darker than most days here at Raven's Head Lake. The split goes all the way to the roof. When did you first notice this? Over a year ago. But it was just a hairline crack then. It grows worse each day. It's a miracle this house is still standing. I'll have to inspect the stress points of the foundation to find out where the fissure begins. That would be in the cellar. Twenty degrees colder down here. It's thirty feet below ground. Oh, oh you hurt? Oh. oh, I don't think so. Bruised my dignity more than anything else. That step seemed to just crumble beneath me. It must really be rotted. The house is over eight hundred years old. It was rebuilt here. 200 years ago, exactly as it stood in Marseille since the 11th century. The wood, the ironwork, even the furniture and tapestries were brought over. It's incredible. You'd think they would have... and spiders seem to be the only living things which haven't deserted us. But even their numbers dwindle. Yes, enough of this talk of death. Let's look at that fissure. This way, sir. Ah, seems to be where the crack begins. Or ends.
incredible. The stone here is all but deteriorated, just crumbling apart. We might be able to shore it up with some timber. The estate abounds with large dead trees. Right, let's get to it. A little bit more. That's good. Hold it there. Yes, Mr. Crispin. I'll take it now. Step back now. There, it's in. We'll have to set another heavy timber on top of this one. It'll be dark soon. We'll do it tomorrow. I had barely begun the repair to the house, but already Roderick's condition had remarkably improved. Your husband is a marvel, my lady. Do you realize this house has not shut at once today? Not since he strengthened the foundation. Roderick, I told you there's no guarantee Jonathan, that... Jonathan, I have great confidence in you, my friend. This is the first time in months I feel there's, there's hope. Now you rest and get well, my dear. And when you're up and about, I'll have Thaddeus go into the village and fetch the makings for a proper feast. We'll have a celebration. Now just hold the crossbeam there. Like this? Yes, just steady. Fine. If I may say, you know your work remarkably well, Mr. Cresswell. Thank you, Daddies. Engineering's been an interest of mine since I was young. It's been a rewarding profession. I feel lucky, very lucky indeed. Can I help you there, sir? No, it's almost ending. I've got it. That should do it. Are you all right? Yes. Thank you, sir. Daddy is 
see that my sister is locked in her room and try and find some way of blocking the secret passageway there. Yes, sir. Jonathan, I'm sorry you had to witness this. One of us could have been killed. She's dangerous. She desperately needs a doctor. There's nothing anyone can do. All of our ancestors died of the same affliction. The excruciating pain of their heightened senses finally drove them to madness. In this one, my father, Jacob Usher. In here, my grandfather. They are all of them here in this crypt, each of them having died agony before their 37th year. And now, inescapably, Madeline and I approach the same fate. Roderick, you're an intelligent man. Surely you can't believe that, that you and Madeline are, are predestined to die at a certain age. Jonathan, we can't believe how often I've tried to convince myself otherwise. All right. You say they all went insane by the age of 37, and yet Madeline must be two years younger than you. And while she's mentally deranged, you're not. I have tried to be strong. To fight it. To delay it. But Madeline was not so strong. She finally simply accepted the inevitable. But you certainly don't have to. We'll know soon enough, my dear friend. My 37th birthday is less than two weeks away. You speak of this with such doom, and yet you... you won't accept any help. Jonathan... The work you've done here, shoring up the foundation, is the greatest help you can give me. What do you mean? By saving this house, you will save me. I don't understand. There's a lot not to understand. There's evil at this house, Jonathan. I didn't want to endanger you. There's no one else I can turn to. She would have surely murdered poor Thaddeus if Roderick hadn't intervened. I couldn't control her. I've never seen such strength in a woman. She should be put away. As if this house isn't already an asylum. I'm getting as bad as Roderick. Now he has me thinking there's something strange about this place. What is it? Early this morning, just after we'd placed the timber, one of the huge stone gargoyles fell from the roof and smashed to the ground right where I'd been standing. Jonathan! And then later, when I was inspecting the repairs in the cellar, a large stone fell and missed me by inches. I thought... It was a crazy thought, I admit. But it was as though the house itself were trying to... Go on. Well, trying to kill me. Actually keep me from making the repairs. I shouldn't have brought you here. You've finished your work. We can leave tonight. Jonathan, we can leave tonight, can't we? Jonathan, what is it? I don't know. I feel responsible for Ron. I'd feel like I was running out on him. Why would you feel that? When Roderick and I were boys. We went skating at the local pond. I was showing off, and I fell through the ice. Of all the boys there, all the ones I considered my friend, only Roderick came to help me. I know. It sounds like a silly childhood story. 
But I've always felt I've owed my life to him. Roderick asked you here for your help and advice in saving the house. You've done that. You can only help someone as much as they'll let you. She'd let me help more. Tell you what. I'll check the timber in the morning and we'll leave tomorrow for sure. Just to cheer you up. That's the best medicine you could give me. Not the very best. Excuse me. Thaddeus, can't you at least clear your throat or something before entering? I'm sorry, sir, but I thought perhaps a pot of hot jasmine tea might cheer up Mrs. Crisp. That's very kind of you, Thaddeus. Thaddeus. How long has Madeline been mentally unbalanced? She seemed to become more unstable just after her 30th birthday. And her condition worsened over these last few years. When I visited here as a boy, I remember her as a lovely child with a sweet face. Yes. The Lady Madeline was the image of her mother. Mrs. Usher was indeed a beautiful woman. That was before she... went insane. Yes. She's an usher by marriage. She couldn't possibly have inherited this usher madness that Roderick speaks of. It was this house that drove Mrs. Usher inescapably to insanity. It's the house again. How can that be? Many have puzzled themselves over this house. You are not the first, sir. As a young man, even I refused to accept the reality of the terror which lurks in these bleak walls. Once, 30 years ago, I left returned a week later. Why did you come back? I felt... I felt... summoned. No. Commanded to return. Ah. It's coming from across the hall. It's from the Lady Madeline's room. Betty has opened the door. I've been told to keep it locked, sir. I command you open that door. I'm sorry, sir. We'll just see what Roderick has to say about this. Really, Mr. Cresswell, I suggest you not interfere. Please, Mr. Cresswell, please. Check the new beams in the cellar. See if they get a hold. Stay here under the doorway. It's the safest place. Is it all right? And the timbers held. Split. Both of them. It's no use, Roderick. There's too much stress on this wall. It's hopeless. And it's true. We're doomed. Evil is stronger than anything we can do. It's enough of this talk. Do you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> 
What is it? What's happening? Please, please, please. Mm. softness of your touch brings torment to my ears. One of them. After you've escorted Jennifer to her chamber, would you return so we can take my sister down to the crypt? Thank you, Thaddeus. That will be all. Roderick. She's gone now. There's nothing more that you can do for her, but there is something you can do for yourself. The time has come for you to leave the House of Usher. This house is dying, and I shall die with it. That's nonsense. Hardly nonsense. This house must continue its desire to destroy the last of the Usher family, me. This ancient structure is nothing but a bloody pile of wood and stone. It's not a living thing. It is alive. Sometimes at night as I lay in bed, I can actually hear it breathing. Sometimes I can hear it sigh wistfully. Other times I can hear it grunt or laugh through its rotted timbers. It's a decaying old house. You think it's alive because that's what you want to believe. Jonathan, when I asked you to come here to try to save this house, I truly hoped I could fight back what I knew in my heart was inevitable. You're not making sense. Too much sense, I'm afraid. Jonathan, I hope you don't feel I've deceived you. You're my only true friend in the world. But to make you truly understand, there is something I must do. outside my family to lay eyes on the secret room. In this chamber, all the evil of the House of Usher began. It was here that all the black arts were performed so many centuries ago. The heinous idolatry of Satan, witchcraft, the black mass, 
cabalistic rites. Every conceivable form of torture and human sacrifice were performed here. Look, even after 800 years, the blood has not faded. Every loathsome act of degradation and horror took place in this vile hellhole of sin. Do you remember, as a boy, you asked me about my family crest, the one on my ring. As you can see, it is a horned goat. Black heritage began in the year 1126. Bardolf Asher, a disciple of the infamous Clementius of Busi, was expelled from the church and driven from his homeland for committing despicable acts against God and man. Five years later, Bardolf built the house of Asher which was to serve as an evil temple of Satan for the next 400 years. Fill us now with your glory and strength. Let now the blood of this spotless sacrifice be blessed by your powerful strength and make you to our own. He invested his evilness within its very walls. Jonathan, hear me. It is the devil himself that is this house. saying the illness you suffer from goes back to the same time. It's the curse, part of the revenge. The illness has plagued every one of this house for the last 400 years. Once the acuteness of senses starts, it's the beginning of the end. Soon, the pain becomes so intense at night that we're forced to lock ourselves in our quarters so as not to injure each other. Your 
saying Madeline has attacked you? In this house down the centuries. Husband has slain wife. Brother has murdered sister. In truth, the furniture was bolted down, not because of the house shifting, but so it couldn't be used as weapons. My great-grandfather bludgeoned one of his own sons to death with the leg of a chair. It's not a very pleasant family history, but it's the only one I have. You do believe me now, don't you? It's not important what I believe. It's what you believe that matters. I'm sorry you don't understand. I am grateful for your concern. Roderick, you're my friend. I can't stand back and watch this happen to you. You've done what you can as best you go. Oh, I'm leaving all right, but I'm taking you with me. No. No, don't even try. You need help. Help I can't provide. For your own sake, I'm getting you out of here. Jonathan! Jonathan, you'll be stopped! We can't wait. I'll be back as soon as I can. I don't think anything else will happen tonight as long as we can get Roderick out of here.
Anybody come in with me. But what if... Just do as I say. She was... She is dead. Now she wants me dead. There was blood coming from her eyes. Tears of blood. It's happened before over the centuries. The final surrender of the soul to the devil. It's not Madeline in that body. It's the house. The devil itself in her. Getting you and Jennifer out of too late, too late. There's a passageway this way.
save yourself. Not without you. It's me who must die. Don't be a fool. Roderick, we've got to get out of here. I must wait here for Madeline. And death. Ah! came in behind the wall of books.
another entrance. of the old mansion engulfed in flames. Just as Jennifer and I had escaped its fate, I sensed that Roderick and Madeline, in their own way, had escaped as well. They were finally free of the torturous existence and evil curse that was the House of Usher. 